ke sesi berikutnya Berikut ini sesi yang saya rasa juga topiknya cukup baru di Indonesia Yaitu tentang strengthening community's role in testing uh, Complementary testing and service delivery Di sini saya akan memanggil empat uh, panelis Yang pertama adalah Dr. Lauren Ferradini dari Linkages Kemudian yang kedua adalah Dr. Pandi Januraga dari Yayasan Kerti Praja Oh ya, oh dok, silakan dok. Mari silakan uh, uh, Bapak Dr. Laren Ferandini, al di Indonesia jadi Bapak juga ya. Kemudian Dr. Pandi Januraga dari Yayasan Ketip Raja. Kemudian Bapak Gama Triyono dari PKP di Jogja. Kemudian uh, Dr. Mitaya Panumpak dari IAS. Uh, kembali uh, kami panggil silakan uh, para panelis untuk maju ke depan uh, ini mau satu satu ya yes yes Baiklah Bapak Ibu sekalian, uh, seperti juga sesi sebelumnya, setiap panelis akan mendapatkan waktu 10 menit untuk presentasi. Kemudian setelah itu disambung dengan tanya jawab uh, selama 30 menit dan kemudian kita closing. Uh, kita langsung saja dengan panelis pertama yaitu Dr. Laren Ferradini dari Linkages. Silakan. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, thanks uh, for the organizer to allow me to, to uh, talk about uh, community-based testing and uh, self-testing. I will try to do it in 10 minutes, but I have to say it's quite a challenge. <laughs> uh, so as we know, uh, the first 90 is a big challenge worldwide. It is uh, even a bigger challenge, I think, in Indonesia. And the last uh, uh, UNA's uh, data have shown that 25% of uh, people worldwide don't know their status. But we have to consider also 15% of those who uh, potentially know but are not linked to care yet. So it's 40% that needs to be linked to care. And, and the ones that would benefit from more HIV testing and more coverage is key population, men, and, uh, and also young people. And when you look up at the, the situation of new infections in the region, uh, you see that three countries, China, India, and Indonesia, account for more than 70% of the new uh, infection. Of course, they are the biggest country in the region. And half of these new infections are from key population, mainly from MSM. But this means also that half of the new infection are within non-key population. I think this is something we have to carefully consider, especially among clients and uh, partners for key population. So recent modeling have shown that this is, this is now that we have to uh, 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 implement at scale the innovations. I make innovation into bracket, as I uh, mentioned earlier, because they are not necessarily innovation. What is new is that we have to really scale up and speed the implementation. And this is now that we have to do it if we want to reach the fast track target and not the dotted line after we do it as uh, usual. So uh, during uh, EIS, there was this uh, document from a decision framework for uh, defining uh, uh, best HIV testing strategies that was uh, issued by WHO and partner. And uh, to uh, set up a client-centered HIV testing model uh, with three components, mobilizing, testing, and linking. And, and you see that partner notification, community, and self-testing, and second same-day art initiation as a really strong part of these strategies. I will not talk about partner notification. We heard the same day, we heard a lot, but I will focus on community and self-testing. And we know from uh, the 2015 guidelines from uh, WHO that good practice for HTS uh, should include integration of HTS in different services, decentralization, and I think it's not only through primary health care, but also outside of the health system, and this, this is where community-based testing is important. And also task sharing or task shifting, 
uh, with uh, increased responsibility of lay counselor uh, or providers to uh, who are trained and non healthcare providers and are trained and, and able to do rapid testing uh, in the community and this is a strong recommendation from WHO. <laughs> So community-based HIV testing aim to offer HTS closer to people in the Your community. Your blood is a little bit slower. A little bit slower? Okay. I'm yeah. so scared I mean, about like, the numbers. Uh, I'm afraid yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and, and, and the aim is to uh, overcome, and, and, and it overcome many barriers for uh, people to uh, reach testing and different location, different timing, or in different places. And this allowed to reach more first-time first time testers and also people who are usually reluctant to use clinical services, which include men, most of them, and, and adolescent or key population. They use fingerprint testing. Uh, the programs can be designed for different subpopulations. Uh, and uh, the new technology, a mobile phone, are very helpful now to uh, increase efficiency. One of key issues is the linkages to prevention and treatment services that we talked about. And there are different ways to do community-based case mm -hmm. testing, mobile testing, we heard a little bit. Event-based testing through national campaign or uh, <coughs> local events, on-based on testing, door-to-door, -door, but also PLHIV and TB household testing is also a strategy. Uh, proposed testing at different at workplace or in educational places like universities where you have many young uh, population there that can uh, be a helpful strategy. An uh, important component is, of course, peer outreach, where trained peers uh, uh, go to venues and specific hotspots to reach out to reach groups, so, such as key population or, or adolescents. So this is not a testing strategy, this is a test for triage strategy, it's more as a screening, and of course we need to link to confirmatory uh, testing, and, and linkages is here absolutely critical, but it's just important to consider that we have to put our resource and effort on a less number of cases because we are dealing only with reactive cases and, and, it's, and given the low prevalence, it's very few cases. So putting our energy to make sure that 100% of those guys are being enrolled is not so huge a burden for the system. And I just want to illustrate what has been implemented for many years in Cambodia, which we call active case management. It's like the navigation approach that we talked about a little bit, to ensure that all reactive cases are linked to, to uh, confirmatory testing and are out. And you have what we call a, a case manager supporter at community and case manager provider at facilities that will inform an OD centralized active case management with a coordinator and assistant about any new reactive cases. And with the database here, this level will be in charge to follow up each cases and make sure they enroll in care and start a donority. This can work for many other functions along the HIV cascade and what has proven to be very effective. So we have many evidence that community-based HIV testing is working with a higher rate of uh, HTC uptake, increased rates of first-timer testing uh, being, uh, being tested, increased rate of early diagnosis. Uh, there is a lower positivity rate, but this is what we expect compared to facility-based approach. Uh, the linkages are uh, efficient, and 80% got a CD4, 73% in this meta-analysis fund that uh, we, uh, was initiated, if eligible. And uh, at the population level, this clearly increased coverage. No harm was reported, and the cost can be calculated, and sometimes it's not so high for patient reached. <laughs> so now it's a, a rec recent modeling issued by UNAIDS about what could be the ideal HIV testing scenario in countries. Uh, you can see that uh, when we consider, we here, and the red line is today, and you see that in the near future, uh, HIV cell testing and community testing in yellow will have to be increased, while VCT and PITC will remain almost same, and eventually will decrease for VCT once the uh, uh, epidemic will be controlled. But uh, uh, HIV cell testing remain quite an uh, uh, important component, and PITC will increase. So clearly, uh, cell testing is becoming a key case timing strategy. Uh, recommended by WHO by since 2016. It can be done and uh, either assisted or unassisted fashion. 
Uh, and uh, during the EIS, uh, two documents were issued. One is a guide for a guide for planning and introducing and scaling up HEC for countries. And another one is from Unite, a market landscape for, uh, for self-test available. Today we have eight HIV self-tests available, uh, which have been either approved and pre-qualified by WHO, one very recently in November, or, or approved by SRA or the expert review panel from Global Fund. So now we have many evidence and many, uh, uh, and I can refer you to this meta-analysis review recently published that uh, self-testing is uh, highly sensitive and specific, maybe higher for blood versus oral self-test. It's accurate, it's highly acceptable in, by many different groups in different settings. Uh, oral test is much preferred by uh, communities. There is no, sh no social harm uh, reported and uh, importantly no increase in the HIV risk behavior or STIs and that was uh, a concern when people see they are negative Ooh, they can have uh, whatever they want but it's not, it's not happening. Uh, 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 Self-testing has been shown to double the uh, level of HIV take in the uh, uh, MSM population and also mm. increase the rate of those who need to re repeated tested because of their risks. So it's also a test a triage approach, as I described for community self-testing, with the same requirement of a confirmatory HIV <coughs> test. Uh, the interpretation of non-reactive has to be balanced with the risk of HIV exposure and the window period eventually. Um, it's uh, uh, also not recommended to test uh, with self-testing the people who were already on RV, and we find many false negative in these cases. That is something we should be aware and ask people if they are not on RV before proposing the testing. And uh, what is a little bit specific for self-testing is the importance for additional support tool to really teach uh, people how to use the test and get support for counseling, uh, uh, referrals after if they have been found positive and there are outlines and many different tools available to very helpful. <coughs> you here have the uh, uh, last and updated uh, number of countries that uh, have uh, policies, so 59 have current policies, 53 are developing policies and Indonesia is one of them. But uh, uh, the implementation is still slow and only 28 countries really implement, and mostly in middle and high income countries. So a lot still need to be done to uh, scale up uh, HIV self-testing. So the, the question is how to adapt uh, self-testing services to, uh, to the context, because it can be delivered through community, through partner uh, delivery, and at the facility, as we have seen previously, in different uh, places and pharmacy and workplace, or integrated in different services, and, and also through internet can be available through different channel, internet, prep, and, and also vending machine. So it's important to uh, uh, adapt the, the, the uh, distribution and, and, the, and the, uh, the program to the national and the, the sub-national epidemiological data and focus where it's mostly needed. <laughs> So uh, I cannot not talk about uh, uh, self-testing without mentioning uh, the uh, recent report published in the 1st of December <coughs> for the STAR project in, uh, in Africa. It's a real uh, large-scale project to uh, take self-testing to scale uh, at this level and learn from program implementation. Many distribution models have been, uh, have been tested. 2.3 million tests have been distributed and the main lesson <coughs> is that it reached a higher proportion of men, young people, and first-time testers. It's increased testing coverage in the population studied, and it has a significant impact when it is used at the uh, health facilities, uh, and it also helped countries to move faster in policy and, uh, and practice uh, and regulation. Uh, as mentioned earlier, and this is the same abstract we, we heard about, is facility-based HIV testing, dramatically increased HIV testing in a, in a program in Malawi. And, and this was compared to PITC or optimized PITC. And you see the dramatic increase of uh, uh, self-testing uptake in this uh, different age population. They got a similar positivity rate, of course, but the increased number of new positive 
which even with lower linkages read, uh, led to an increased number of people start to donate in this study. And there are also another abstract showing that this approach at facility is of cost effective. Another interesting aspect of uh, self-testing distribution is secondary distribution. That uh, uh, increased the rate of testing for male partners, for young women in Kenya. And the women were proposed either oral fluid self-testing or partners classical referral. And you see a dramatic increase by more than 40% of, of testing male or in couple uh, HIV testing in, the, in, this, uh, in this setting. No intimate partner violence were reported. Uh, and uh, a com um, community, so in Thailand and Laos, uh, uh, self-testing is being delivered in communities, a linkages program uh, uh, to uh, <coughs> work with MSM and TG. <coughs> it's used over quick and uh, mobile and internet-based uh, uh, tool. And you see in Laos a rapid increase of HIV testing uptake. Uh, with a, a strong uh, strategy to uh, link it uh, uh, the positive, and 96% were linked to care in this uh, setting. <laughs> and here, however, in Thailand, so assisted uh, uh, self testing were preferred, as the linkages I've shown previously were not so good, and so some really intervention needs to be done and to, uh, in Thailand to support. So it's not impossible because we could do it now, but clearly in different contexts you have different challenges. So uh, for uh, HIV self-testing, what's the benefit and limitation? I mean, we talk about we talked about this. <coughs> I just want to insist here about the, the need for confirmatory testing and the importance of linkages. <coughs> uh, the importance of additional support for uh, self-testing, uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, it's uh, vital to have policy and regulation in place in country to allow uh, procurement and a good cost for uh, self-test. Uh, and uh, I didn't talk much about MNE challenges because it's important, especially for an assisted uh, self-testing and a secondary provision of self-test, because you, you provide and you switch the, the, the uh, test to individuals outside facilities, so the collection of data is much more problematic. Uh, and uh, I just want to remind that the best is the enemy of the good, so we should not take it as an argument not to implement self-testing, even if we cannot be perfect on the MNE part, because we know this is a working strategy, and, and, and this has, might have an impact on, on, on the uh, country. So in conclusion, I uh, just say that community-based HTS index testing and self-testing have really the potential to impact the first 90, especially in Indonesia, where it's a great challenge. <laughs> Uh, uh, Self-testing can be integrated into community, index testing and partner notification, but also at facility. And I think this is a good opportunity because I completely believe that we have a missed opportunity of HIV diagnosis in facilities everywhere. And self-testing can really help to improve PITC and, and testing at facility when people go because they have a reason to come to the facility and we should not miss to diagnose them at this level. So I think self-testing can really help here. Secondary self-testing distribution, I think this is an interesting uh, uh, option, especially here that we are pushing for a partner notification. It can also improve and, 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 and synergize with the current strategy, which is mainly based on referral, and, and, we, are, and we have argument to say that it's efficient in other places. Uh, we need to design special support for linkages, both for community testing and then uh, self-testing. We have navigation somewhere in place in some uh, setting, and, uh, and this has been to be optimized for this approach. Additional support tools are important for self-testing, and there are a lot are available. No need to reinvent the wheel, but adapt what is available. Uh, Cost-effectiveness of self-testing, I think, should be further studied. Uh, we have evidence in some places that it is cost-effective. It could be uh, because of the uh, high acceptability and the positivity rate in covered populations. I think this is an interesting uh, study, study to, be, to be done. Finally, the lesson learned with self-testing could really benefit to many other diseases, uh, especially hepatitis, malaria, STI, or HPV and eventually uh, uh, through multiplex platform as people are, are working uh, hard uh, actually. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you.